All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar event. My name is Joshua, and I'm going to be your presenter today. Uh, we're here to talk about accounting and petty cash, dealing with petty cash. Um, before we get started on our topic, a um, couple things. Uh, we're going to be together for the next 20 minutes or so. Uh, if you have questions for me, please type those into the questions portion or control pa uh, portion of the control pa webinar control panel. I will do my best to keep an eye on those questions and repeat those for everyone's benefit, and then um, try to get those answered. Please keep the questions on the topic at hand. Uh, there may be another webinar that is uh, geared towards the other questions that you have about the software. Of course, our support technicians are available and happy to answer questions you have, 800-533-5227. Um, if you uh, use the little red arrow on the sidebar of your webinar control panel to get that out, that uh, webinar control panel out of the way, it does allow you to get a better visual um, idea of the presentation here. Or if you've got a dual monitor set up, just drag that off out onto the second desktop simply to get it out of our way here. Um, before we get, again, finally, before we get started, I do want to point out that you know while we are recording today's webinar event. Um, that there is already some a video out on petty cash on our website now. Um, it frankly, folks, it has not been uh, in terms of how it's handled and dealt with. It is not any different now than it was on these previous recordings. The only difference is the version of Church Windows. So um, if I go into the support center right here, we've got accounting petty cash it was recorded back in 2015, version 17 and newer. But how we're what we're going through today to show you how to set this up and work with it is no different now than it was then. So while we will have this video out on the website here in the next week or two, um, the video out there on the website covers exactly the same thing and goes it's dealt with exactly the same way. It's that simple. Okay. So if we come back into Church Windows, our current version is 2017.3. If you have a different version and you're on our update and support program and you have questions about that, please call us, um, 800, again, 533-5227. Um, when we go into accounting, many churches will track petty cash, of course. You know, I mean, lots of businesses do. You know, they have keep cash on hand for the purposes of those minor expenses where so, you know, somebody hands you, the, you a receipt for something that you purchased and you don't want to have to go through the process of entering a bill and paying it and then turning around and writing them a check for, you know, very minor, small expenses that we just don't want to have to go through all that trouble to do that. And so petty cash is, of course, very important. Not all churches do, but many will, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, folks. The thing I wanted to point out was the... I'm using a document that is on the support center for this now. So if we go back to the support center, I just want to show you that the document that I'm using is here already, even though the video is already out there. So just if you're looking for, if you're wondering about the document or the documentation that I'm using as the guide for the event today, again, if we click under Petty, and we type in Petty here, and if you click on the link for Petty Cash version 17 and newer, right here's the video, but right up here it says view or print PDF file. Let me get my highlighter out again right here, accounting Petty Cash view or print PDF, okay? Uh, sorry, that was my fault. Um, all right. So the first thing about the Petty Cash, there are two steps as part of that document. But both require setting up an actual asset account called Petty Cash. So when we go into our chart of accounts here, you know, we see our checking accounts and our savings and our other assets and investments and what have you. We don't see Petty Cash. So I will add that Petty Cash asset to my 100 series accounts here. I can do it from my tree view, or I can go up to manage accounts here at the top left in accounts plus minus and choose assets right here in the upper left hand corner. We see that, let me get my highlighter again, right up here, there, assets, we can do it that way. I'm gonna add it from the tree view. Um, 
So when we go to tree view, I simply right click over assets. It says add a new asset. So I open that up and it opens up my add asset account or add account. I'm going to call this petty cash. And I'm going to number it 110105. And I'm going to go, it's going to go into total current assets and investments. So I'm choosing the appropriate subtotal and simply click OK. Okay, there it is. So it's in my chart of accounts, but it has no balance. Okay, so how do we get that balance in there? Okay, well, first of all, on my bank or on my detail tab here, I'm going to make sure that my bank name is set up for how I want my check payable, or it might be just cash. Depends on how your bank does business or wants you to have those addressed. But then we're going to go up to transactions in the top left. We're going to go to transfer right here across the top center. So it takes us to our enter transfers window. Let me get out my highlighter again. Right up here, transfer. That's what I went to. Okay. So then this opened up our enter transfer screen. All right. So you know, the church decides how much money you want to keep in your petty cash box, okay? Church Windows has no requirements for that. I've seen churches that keep 25 bucks in that. I've seen churches that keep 300 in it. It really is up to you folks there. Typically, $100 is probably pretty average, okay? So you would enter the date that you're actually going to the bank and withdrawing those cash monies. Then you would go from account would be your wherever the money is being withdrawn from. So in this case, we're going to choose our Huntington Bank checking, our two account. Notice it only allows us to choose another asset. It's going to be our petty cash. And here we're going to put in our $100, $100. And then here, and this is one of the things I like to point out about this function, folks, is a lot of folks are unaware that when you're posting a transfer between cash accounts, you can actually choose computer check and print a check. So if I needed to print a computer prepared check made out to cash, I would choose computer check. You know, and then I'd just say to, you know, for petty cash, cash box. Um, and then I would click done add to batch. I'm a big fan of using the show running balance button here in the upper right, folks, that, you know, our show running balance simply allows us to be able to see right here, this show running balance button right there, allows us to see the effects of the transactions on the accounts that were involved in our entry here before we post it. So if we click on that, it now shows our Huntington Bank checking is lower by 100 and our petty cash has an adjusted balance of 100. Okay, so it's doing what I want. So I would then post this. We're not going to print it. But then when we go to print checks, notice here we've got a check waiting in the print queue for petty cash. So I can now print an actual physical check that I can then take to my bank to withdraw that cash out of the bank. Okay. So it would be dealt with no differently than any other check. I'm just not entering a bill and paying a bill to get that. Okay, so now once I go down to the bank and I withdraw that and I've got it, you know, securely in my petty cash box here in my desk drawer at the church or however the church does that in the safe or what have you. Now someone comes to me and says, hey, Josh, I've got a receipt for, you know, a pizza I brought, bought for the a youth event early, earlier this week. Okay. So I can do it in a couple different ways. Um, I could go into transactions, other, and I can post a journal entry to debit the expense and credit the petty cash account, essentially showing as a withdrawal. It's a one transaction transaction at that point. Okay, one entry transaction. Putting in the comments there maybe who I issued the reimbursement for from petty cash. Or I can go to enter bills and pay bills and just enter it like a standard bill. So, you know, let's say 
uh, Don Brenner bought pizza for the youth, you know, a pizza for a youth event here. So I would put in, you know, I'm just going to choose a miscellaneous expense here, folks. Miscellaneous office expense, you know, and I'll put in $18.94. Um, pizza, youth event, something like that. Anyway, you get the idea here. Whatever comments you want. And then I would do done, add to batch, and similarly post and pay these bills. So just like I do normally, the all difference here on this is now when I get to the pay bills window, I'm first of all going to change my Huntington Bank checking, which is my default asset, to my petty cash. And I'm going to choose cash as my payment method. Okay. So then... I'm reducing the petty cash by the $18.94 that I'm reimbursing Don. Okay. Uh, like again, I said, I'm big on the show running balance window. So now notice here that I'm reducing petty cash by $18.94. And I'm also, you know, clearing out Don's account to ensure it's back to zero again. Okay. So that's just doing exactly what I want. So then I would simply post this. Yes, then I would take Don's receipt for the petty, you know, for the pizza that he purchased for the youth event. I would then um, put that receipt in the petty cash box, give him the $18.94, okay? And then I've still entered and paid the bill without affecting my bank reconciliation and my treasure, I mean, and still affect my, affected my treasurer's report without having something necessarily affect my bank reconciliation, okay? The... Uh, some folks, now this is where things get to be a little tricky, because it really varies. Some churches will go, okay, we're just going to continue applying those expenses, monitoring that petty cash balance, you know, so as I continue to expense money out of petty cash, now when I go to the balance tab here, we notice it has been reduced, it's now at a current balance of 8106, okay, is some churches or folks will continue to expense money out of that until it gets below a certain point, you know, 25 bucks, 20, 10, what have you. Then they want to re-up it, okay? Some churches will basically, in order to ensure that petty cash is always at that level, they would then basically go back and post another transfer from checking to petty cash for the 1894 that I've reimbursed Don immediately. They always want to keep it at $100 in this case, okay? If you're looking at that document from the website, that's really the fundamental distinction between options one and two is, do you want to always know that petty cash is at the base level and always, or are you okay with it basically kind of dwindling down and then doing it, re-upping it as needed? It really is up to you, okay? In either case, you have to make sure that the, you debit the expense and credit the petty cash account instead of your regular checking, okay? Like I said, the other way that I could do this would be to go up to transactions, other, say, journal entry. This eliminates, again, it takes it away from two transactions down to one. So, you know, let's say I've got another one and I've received another petty cash receipt from somebody. Um, And now I need to post that. Um, reimburse Steve Smith for stamps. So rather than entering and paying a bill to Steve Smith for those, you know, I would just choose my office supplies, office expense, you know, type in the amount. $13.45, we'll put in from petty cash for stamps, if I could type today. So I've got my debit to my office expense. When the account moves down, I would show my choose my petty cash account, put the same $13.45 in the credit side, done add to batch. Again, showing running balance to show that the transaction is having the desired effect on my account, and it is. Petty cash is being reduced, and my office expense is being increased to show that that 
you know, that's what was we're paying for. And again, then I can then just take the 1345 out of my petty cash box and replace it with his receipt. Same thing, clicking post. Okay. However you choose to do it. In both cases, though, the credit side of the transaction is petty cash. Then, again, when I'm ready to now to re-up my petty cash, I've got to put more cash in that drawer. I've expensed enough out of it. Don't have enough in there to cover miscellaneous expenses or minor expenses. I simply go back up to transactions, transfer, and I am back to, you know, posting my transfer from my, my general checking account, Huntington Bank account, to my uh, petty cash box. Okay. So Huntington Bank to Petty Cash. I suppose I should go in and take a look and see how much that is. So what is it down to now? Uh, petty Cash balance is down to 67.31. So what is that? Uh, 32.39. So yes, I would go back up to Transactions, Huntington Bank Checking to Petty Cash. My math was awfully quick there. I might, might be wrong. We'll know when we do our show running balance. Nope, I was spot on. So I would just keep doing these asset transfers each and every time I want to up my petty cash box, however often that occurs, folks. Some like to keep it at the base $100 or whatever your topped up level is at all times. Therefore, they're transferring anytime. Or some will wait until it goes down to a you know a below a certain threshold or level. Okay, entirely up to you. Okay, all right. With just a couple minutes to spare here, that is our topic for the day. Let me see here. What questions do we have? If we already have a petty cash fund that is not being tracked by Church Windows and doesn't require a transfer, how do we set up the account and show that there are funds in that account? enter the petty cash amount as income. Uh, now, I'm not sure if you're meaning a cash, petty cash fund or asset. That's honestly, Albertina, that's a question probably you should call us on support to get answered. Uh, petty cash asset, okay. Um, I would certainly, uh, that's a tough question. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'd have to think on that and get. we'd have to get you to know, call me on support on it um, because, again, if it's already there, you'd probably either have to wait for it to go down until it gets to zero or, you know, we have to find some way of creatively getting it attracted in accounting or set up. Um, yeah, because you can't affect your cash accounts because it's already been affecting – it's already affected cash. You're probably looking at posting a, you know, a debit to the petty cash account for whatever the current balance is and a credit to a fund, but it's really tough because, again, you're, you are distorting your balance sheet totals at that point. So it might be something you need to get kind of start over when that account is there. So anyway, yes, please call us on it. We'll be happy to help with you, talk with you about it. All right, I don't see any other questions coming in. I'll, let me give folks a few seconds here to type something in. Maybe somebody's kind of feverishly typing something to me. Maybe not. Yeah, again, folks, the video out there on the website talks about this exact same thing. Um, let's go ahead and post that. But again, petty cash is very helpful for those incidental, minute charges where basically, again, you don't want to enter a bill and pay a bill necessarily and print a check to a vendor. You can still go ahead and enter. The entering and the paying the bills is not the problem so much. It's the printing of the check. Do we really want to waste check stock on paying somebody for a, you know, very small amount that can be dealt with better in petty cash? All right. Well, I don't see any questions coming in. Uh, I, you know, means I hopefully we did a good job here today on this. If you have questions, please call us 800-533-5227. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar for everyone. Hope it was helpful, and we look forward to seeing you all at a future Church Windows webinar event. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. Goodbye.